I enjoyed giving a Meet the Professor session on effective behavior change. The challenge with that topic is that the evidence doesn't support one way. And when we're treating diabetes, type 2 diabetes with oral agents, we actually have really nice algorithms that are put out by the national organizations and international organizations guiding us on a path. Whereas with effective lifestyle change, what we're finding with the literature now is that there is no one best approach. So specifically in diet, there is a, a nice randomized trial and then a three, four meta-analyses that came out following this study showing that it doesn't matter what type of diet you choose, your patient chooses, it's whether or not they stick to it. So if the diet is uh, mostly or focused on protein, low-fat protein or low-fat foods or low-carbohydrate, whatever the focus is, as long as it's hypocaloric, meaning it's reduced in calories by 25%, which is what the Pounds Loss study did, that you'll see the same outcome early and late. And the folks who stayed with the study, with the trial for, I think it was 50, around 50 months, had the best outcome, of course, not surprising. And so we learned from that study that we really, when our patients come to us with an idea for the South Beach diet or the paleo diet, that our answer shouldn't be, I don't see data on that, or I don't know if that's good for you. It should instead be, well, tell me about it. How are you going to do it? Is it really going to work for you? Because what we learned with the pounds lost and then the meta-analysis is that the one factor that made a difference with your, the outcome was adherence, was whether or not you actually followed it. So it's not shocking. But it does help us, after so many years of trying to understand what the best diet is, it kind of helps us as providers realize, as clinicians realize that our patients might be right when they say, I'm really excited about this diet, I can eat as much meat as I want. I mean, they might be right as long as the caloric content is lower than what they had before, which most diets are designed that way. And the other thing we talked about is some useful strategies, for example, sleep. So if, if somebody has poor sleep, there's a vicious cycle going on with it. Poor sleep leads to insulin resistance, leads to somnolence, leads to poor eating behavior, no exercise, and it just keeps going on and on. But if you don't have those three tenets, the exercise, the sleep, and the diet all together, you really won't succeed. So addressing sleep is, is pretty huge and then the last thing is is moving your body and i presented one study showing that you can actually achieve the same benefit in terms of raising your metabolic rate which leads to burning calories it's our mark a good marker for burning calories you can get there in this to the same degree if you're just moving around a lot in your daily life taking the stairs, walking to the store from far away in the parking lot, that kind of activity, then if you become a jogger and you jog in the middle of the day, but you're otherwise sedentary. So if you compare those two individuals, they're actually either doing the same or the person who's always moving might actually be achieving more caloric burn, which is interesting. But it's important to share with our patients because they might feel intimidated by the idea of exercise but what we're really talking about is moving. And unfortunately, as mostly women, as we get older, our fun activities, and I think this applies to men too, but the data show in women, our fun activities become slow activities. They become hanging out at a party, drinking all night in one, in one chair versus going to a game or going somewhere where you're moving around, like playing tennis with your friends. You do less and less of that. We really should be doing more and more of that as we get older because that's when the risks of not exercising really set in and the risk of diabetes increases. So hopefully we made the point that our patients will guide us, but we have to push them to stick with a program, find, a, find something that will work and stick to it. And we just have to be major cheerleaders for them.